Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a quick video on how to install a door viewer. Now a door viewer is also very commonly known as a peephole. Uh, why we, you would want to install one of these is so you can see who's on the other side of the door without actually having to, to open the door. I say really it's for security reasons. Guys, out of all the jobs on the channel, this is probably the easiest or one of the easiest. You need minimal tools, minimal knowledge, and it's it's quick and a, a simple job. So I would definitely highly recommend at least giving this a try on your own. So what we'll do now is material and tools. Alright guys, this is our material and our tools list. So our material is just our door viewer. It actually has instructions on the inside on uh, what drill bit that you need. It says the thickness of the door. It'll fit from 1 and 3 eighths to 2 and an eighth. And then down here it actually gives you the instructions on uh, the size of bit you need. For this you need a 9 sixteenths bit so guys this is our our drill bit set we have our cordless drill and a measuring tape guys this is all we need to do this job all right guys the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how wide our door is so our door is 34 inches so what i'm going to do is split the difference 34 divided by 2 is 17 you want the viewer to be right in the middle so it looks symmetrical. So we'll do 17 inches, which is right there. And now guys, for the height, the height is really subjective to what you want it to be. I'm a little bit short of six feet tall, but I would say a height, maybe around five foot three is a good height universally. Because somebody sure will be able to use it and then somebody tall, We'll just have to bend down a little bit. Okay, so that is five foot three right there. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my nine sixteenths drill bit and then we are going to drill a hole. Alright guys, so this is how this works. When you unthread it, it'll open it, and then as you tighten it on, that's what will clamp inside the door like that. Alright guys, so we have to drill the hole for this end here because it is bigger. So always before you drill your hole, check to make sure that your bit is going to be big enough. And as you can see, it is just big enough. So what we'll do now is we're going to drill our hole. Alright guys, as usual, put on some safety glasses. I know it's a very quick and simple job, but accidents can happen at any time, especially when you're overconfident about where you are. Alright guys, so when we drill our hole, the important thing is to go straight. Don't be going from the side to side or anything like that. And this is a very common mistake for beginners. I mean, I still do it. As my bits get dull, I tend to push harder. But if, you're, if your hole is not straight, the thicker the material you go through, the more it's going to be off. And my simple job has just turned bigger. There was a patch here that I could see, but I didn't think that this would happen. But what I'll do is I'll finish the hole. And then guys, I suggest finishing the hole from the outside so it doesn't break the one side out.
All right, guys, so we have our outer and our inner. All right, so guys, there's also a slot in the middle here. So what you can do is take something longer and then put it inside. All right, so this is something that I wasn't prepared for, but you can see this type of patch or something here. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to figure out a solution to this problem. All right, guys, I have figured out a solution to this problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of plywood, I'm gonna cut a square, and then I'm gonna drill the hole in the middle, and then that is going to cover this up. I'll paint it white so it looks better. So guys, what you need to keep in mind here is, this is how far, so between the back of the door and, and the rim here, this is how much play I have to work with. I'm gonna say that looks like about a three quarters of an inch just eyeing this out. But guys, I would say three eighth plywood is more than enough. Use whatever you have, but I'm just gonna cut a small square I'm gonna drill the hole, I'm gonna paint it, I'm gonna mount it, and then that is going to create a backing on this side. So guys, a very quick and simple job has now turned into a bigger one. All right guys, first thing we need to do is figure out how big of a piece we need to put over this. So my damage section is two inches. So if I go two inches, Make a mark there, another two inches down, make a mark there. I'll have a four inch plate, if you will, to go over this. And then we'll do the same thing going the other way. Now guys, when you're going the other way, uh, eye it off the, uh, the hole on the other side. Don't go off of this side. So what I'll do now is I'll head down to the garage, I'll get a piece of plywood, and then I'm gonna cut it a four by four and then I'm going to drill the hole. So guys, when you do this, drill your hole first before you cut the piece because it'll be easier to control the piece of wood. But what, what, but what we will do now is we'll go down to the garage, uh, grab some material, and then we will make a plate for this. All right guys, this is our material and tools. So we have paint. I have a little bit of quarter inch plywood. Guys, once again, make sure that you uh, write the year. I believe this is 2020. There's a, a rust spot right where the second digit is, but. For tools, we have our paintbrush. We have a speed square that is going to be a ruler. We have our safety equipment right here. We got glasses and earplugs. Measuring tape. We have a skill saw, and then once again, we have our drill with a 916 bit. So guys, really quickly, make sure in this case here that you use a skill saw. Don't use a reciprocating saw, a, a saw is all, because the skill saw, it spins, so you're gonna get a nice clean edge, not, uh, not a torn up edge. So this is nice and clean, so we wanna keep this looking as nice as possible. Guys, remember, this will be visible. But what I'll do now is we will measure out for our piece of plywood. All right, guys, first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out our plywood. So this is a speed square. It is a right angle. So the first thing you want to do is put it on the very corner and make sure that the top and the bottom line up so it's a square cut. In this case, it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure or I'm going to mark it at the four inch right there and then we'll flip this over and we'll do the same thing on the other side at the four inch mark okay so there is our two marks so what we'll do now is we are going to measure four inches to the top and then guys measure four inches from the other side right there So guys, if you, uh, if you wanna check how close you are to being square, you can go from corner to corner. Five, five, eight, 
five and five eighths, so we know we're we are good. All right, so we now need to uh, mark out our hole. So guys, since we're we have a four inch span, we're gonna put a mark at two inches, and then we're gonna do the same thing at two inches. All right, guys, so right here is where we're going to put our hole. All right, guys, so we have our mark right here. So uh, once again, when you drill, get the tip of your bit poking through and then hit it from the other side. That is going to keep your wood from breaking out and uh, it'll make a nice clean edge. Now, this is only three, uh, sorry, this is only a quarter inch. So it'll take only five seconds to be able to see the feeder going through. All right, so there's our hole right there. And now we're gonna drill from the other side. All right, so we have our hole. I didn't do this, but make sure that you draw a line going across. All right, guys, so we have our mark, we have our mark. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, cut with the skill saw. So guys, in this case, Go from here to here, and then from here to here. All right guys, again, put on your glasses and your earplugs. When cutting plywood, you get a lot of chips. All right guys, so there's our piece right there. So clean everything off, get any burrs or anything like that off. This side is a little bit rougher than this side, so I'll use this to be on the inside of the door, this, uh, the side that you'll see. All right guys, so we have our paint. And we'll go around the edges first. All right guys, that's our first coat. I'm gonna go and then uh, clean off the paintbrush. I'm gonna give this an hour and then we're gonna come back. Now, it is cold. It's a few degrees over freezing. So this is going to take a little bit longer, but uh, I'll come back, I'll do the second coat. When the second coat is all done, dry, ready to go, uh, that's when we'll come back and we'll take a look and see what we have. All right guys, this is my plate this is what it looks like so i painted it three times if you really want to you can make it look better than this but i don't really care all that much so the idea is that our plate here is going to cover up our hole like that now guys one other thing you can do is if you want to help to get this to stick you can uh, put a bead of silicone around it i'm not going to i think uh, when i tighten the thing down it'll hold the whole thing together All right, guys, so that's what it looks like. Again, this is meant to be just a simple fix to this problem. If you really want to, you can put a frame here. You can turn this into a mural. You can do a lot of things, but I mean, I achieved my goal. I addressed the obstacles that I had in front of me, and then... That's what it looks like, but uh, it's too bright outside. But really quickly... 
there we have it. All right, guys, so what we'll do now is an overview of this job. All right, guys, so that concludes this project. So this is a perfect example on how a very simple project can go sideways very quickly. But, I mean, it is what it is. Just address the issues as they, they come up. Guys, the time on this job, the time in total was about an hour and a half. I would say if I was to just do this on my own without any hiccups, I would have been done in 20 minutes. But the uh, cost on this job, the door viewer the paint and everything um i'm gonna say it was about 30 dollars the the paint i already had uh guys once again you can put some adhesive some uh, silicone on the back of the block if you want to but i think if you tighten down the door viewer uh there's no reason for it to loosen up over time there's no vibration or anything like that with a car where things can loosen up over time Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that. And I also hope that your project goes smoother than mine did here. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.